Well, hello there and welcome to another edition of Warbird Wednesday. My name is Fred Bell. I'm the Vice Chairman of the Palm Springs Air Museum. And today we have a, we're moving down the line in observation here. Kind of exciting, Greg. I know Greg looks to be excited. One of these days, Greg, we are getting a lot of pressure for an on-camera experience with the Mr. Kenny, the Greg Kenny. So that someday we're going to have to get you out in front of the camera. Greg is saying, no, I'm never doing that. But uh, at some point, we're going to have to get him to do that. Uh, but today, he is my ebullient assistant. Did I get that one? Ebullient? He's my ebullient assistant. And uh, we are, again, looking at, uh, continuing to look at observation airplanes. Give you an idea where we're going. We're going to work through the L, the O, so liaison, which is what we're going to talk today, which is an L5. And then we're going to work through the P, which is patrol. And then eventually we're going to get to what uh, replaced these aircraft. We actually have a couple of drones in our inventory. So we're going to get to those drones uh, in the process. And then, Greg, I think we're going to give another hint. We're going to start moving into helicopters. It's exciting. And, and again, helicopters, some of the helicopters we're going to cover were observation helicopters or scouts in the beginning. And we're going to keep working through that. But today we're going to talk about the Stinson L5, the Sentinel. But before I do that, what do you do when you can travel to Palm Springs, Greg? You play golf. I think there's like 150 golf courses here. So for the new year, I am celebrating one of the staples in Palm Springs, which is, I think I have a hole in one on my head. Greg thinks I have a hole in my head. But I'm going to go ahead. He's nodding. I'm going to go ahead and pull my hole in one bray off. Toss it off camera, and he gets another good catch. So today we are talking about the L5. Now the I'm going to reach up here and grab. This is a fairly close. Somebody actually made this. This is a fairly close um, facsimile of a Stinson L5. But we're going to go ahead and and kind of cover this. I'll give you the plan view. Greg can throw up the plan view. Now what we're talking about here, obviously is more of these light airplanes. Cruising speed on these aircraft is around 100 miles an hour. I think for the L5, it was uh, 105 miles an hour to be very specific. Um, it was a derivative of a Stinson product called the YO-54. That's what it was derived out of. But it, they all have, and, and even with like the O2 and the Piper that we were talking about, they all have a real common characteristic. A small engine, high wing, Lots of observation, stall, which are the short takeoff and landing. Here goes one. Right, they're they're made out of. Uh, very lightweight material. Uh, they are a scout or observation or liaison, in this case the L. They, um, if they run into determined opposition, we talked about this before, they're toast. So, but remember at that time, and this goes all the way back, I'm gonna put this back up there. This goes all the way back to, we got it to stay, I'm excited about that. Observation balloons, Greg, if you think about it, uh, as soon as they could figure out, before that it was you got to the high ground to sight artillery. You were bringing artillery in on the enemy and you got to the highest point possible so that you could walk or sight artillery in on your opponent. Well, once we got um, balloons, uh, and the balloons were first and then observation airplanes uh, early in World War I, these kind of scout airplanes emerged and their sole job was to bring in artillery or in this case, as they evolved, they could uh, move like this aircraft. Greg will show you actually has a litter in the back of it. You could move one person. Not terribly efficient. If you look at this compared to uh, helicopters, and the reason helicopters replaced these for casualty movement is they were terribly inefficient, but they were very good, wide stance. They could land on unimproved uh, runways or unimproved areas. And they could, uh, they, again, they were relatively slow. So they were easy to handle, uh, fairly um, 
light monicum of training to learn how to fly them. They weren't difficult to fly. They were not all weather airplanes. In other words, if you ran into weather, you would have a problem. But this particular company that built these, and we've talked about a lot of these aircraft companies, Greg, that have just gone extinct. And, and this is one of them, Stinson, uh, 1926 from Detroit. And they did move into building uh, so a number of high-wing airplanes. Uh, the military in this, this was a middle 1940s construction. They were gone by the end of the war. Uh, and then after the end of the war in 1948, Stinson was sold to Piper. So they kind of went off into history. But for this, they, they, at this point in history, in the middle war period where they needed these liaison airplanes, they were quite prolific. Now, the other thing about them that's kind of cool on this is that because they had such a short takeoff and landing system, and Greg can talk about this, that they actually had a system that was developed by James H. Brody. It's always cool when you develop something and then they name it after you. We're going to have to come up with something and name it the Greg at some point. We'll invent something. But uh, James H. Brody invented the Brody landing system which, and Greg can throw up a graphic, but essentially there was like a contraption on the top of it that would catch the airplane. And, and if you remember the trapeze, which is the best thing I can call it, is a, it was a cable trapeze that could launch the airplane or capture it, and you could get away with it because these airplanes were, were so small and were so light. Obviously, you need an aircraft carrier, but they actually tw tested this and used the system. These flew off uh, LSTs at Okinawa, if you can believe that. They, they were flying them off LSTs. You know what LST is, Greg, right? Landing ship, tank. So uh, essentially a, a big, uh, a flat bottom cargo ship that would go into the beach and drop stuff off. But they were flying these off of LSTs with that Brody system uh, in late World War II. Uh, and so it, it, and I've actually seen pictures, and Greg can find one, in like the 1950s, I think, of one of these going off the deck of the Midway. You can believe that. You had a, a Top Gun Stinson pilot flying off the deck of the Midway. Uh, but of course, they didn't, especially if you turn that carrier into the wind, and at the speed of the carrier, these things could get off in no, no time at all. But that's what they were, um, they were really designed to do, this kind of short field observation. They didn't carry armament. We talked about uh, bazookas on some of the other airplanes and you could mount uh, what we would call light projectile artillery on these but uh, you didn't want to you know get in a fight these wings are either uh, laminated wood or in some cases fabric the, there's a lot of fabric in the on the sides of this airplane and a bullet's going to go right through it so if you run into anything you're in, in a lot of trouble now the other thing that is very interesting about this is this was, Greg, uh, in an experiment by NACA, a familiar suspect in our, in our travels. NACA did some work on this uh, in the late 40s, and what they were coming up with was what they called a quiet flight configuration. You ever heard of quiet flight configuration? Now, Greg can find the graphic on this, but essentially, they would, they change the propeller, they put a different muffler system on the airplane. And what they were able to do is the sound, without getting too complex into this, the sound of a propeller, like if you hear a propeller go by, and we always talk about the steerman or whatever, and you hear that whine, that is the sound of the uh, propeller moving through the air, the tip of the propeller, and the pitch on the propeller affects it a little bit and also the speed of the propeller so that that can give you that kind of um, in a layman uh, description how you get that kind of whine off of a propeller it depends on the speed of the propeller and everything else but it's a dead giveaway if you're going over and you're doing that loud whine well that's not a good thing for an observation airplane because it makes you a target so what they did was NACA experimented with a different propeller that took the whine out and um, actually reduced the overall sound of this airplane by 
percent. Can you believe that? So it's interesting. We're in the uh, in what we call our rotating stock hangar here at the airport, where we rotate the stock in and out. And we make repairs, and uh, this is interesting because in front of us we're putting the stealth fighter back together. So, but Greg, this is really one of the first stealth airplanes. If you think about that, they're experimenting with it. Was quiet, so they. Um, they turned this into kind of a quasi-stealth airplane. So what I want to do today is I'm going to move over to my stage two. And the people I want to uh, celebrate today is anybody, and there's not very many of them left. There are a lot of guys that are in after war periods, but artillery people. These airplanes were observation airplanes and worked with artillery. But if you were in artillery, uh, one of the things that you did, and you even do now, precision weapons have taken some of that away, but you support your ground troops, right? The ground pounders in front of you, they're uh, getting shot at, and a lot of times artillery is to keep the enemy's head down. It can open a way in an offensive to break through something. Precision munitions that we have on a lot of these aircraft now have taken away from some of the art of artillery, which is essentially lobbing a bomb with precision at somebody. But if you were in the artillery, I want to salute you today. And what I'm going to do is uh, this kind of, Greg has kind of gone with a color. It even matches my hat, Greg, I think. A color coated soda. This is, this one just doesn't mess around. This is Jones Pure Cane Sugar Soda. They don't screw around. There's Pure Cane Sugar in this. They're not hiding it. Uh, it is a green apple soda. The Jones family, independent since 96. Like, that's a big deal from 96. Is that like ancient history now? But maybe, I guess it is. Uh, since 1996, a small team of soda enthusiasts. This was made by a soda enthusiast. Um, has bottled this. Save caps, get gear. So they actually have gear with this, Greg. Almost like my fleece as I'm working in the... Uh, subtle product placement. Jones uh, Pure Cane Sugar is not a sponsor of the program, but last week, and I think, look at this, Greg, I can twist this off. This is exciting. Um, I, last week, Greg had me drinking dirt. So this week, to be drinking something that has, oh, it has a pleasant aroma, a, a, some semblance of actually something that's actually drinkable, I want to thank Greg and this week I'm not drinking dirt, but we're going to salute those artillery folks. You know what, Greg? That's not bad. You know, after a couple of misfires, this one, it's a little tart. Now I'm going to, I've got to be careful because the family's going to go, oh, pure cane sugar, you're not supposed to be having sugar. But, um, the, um, but we're going to go ahead and, and use that as a salute. Now, the interesting thing about this airplane is it didn't end there. And I, we've, got, uh, we've got a lot of traffic on the airport today. There goes another one of those fine airport vehicles. But the, um, the airplane didn't end there. It's like the Piper, uh, like the Airco, like an, a number of these uh, companies. Uh, these airplanes moved into enthusiast hands, and the other thing that is is cool about this is uh, it is you know this is now people say oh this isn't a warbird this is absolutely a warbird. The United States Army has a new and radical little plane too, designed to go wherever ground troops can go. It needs remarkably little space to take off, and it climbs like a shot. pilot and an observer or cameraman, the ship is highly maneuverable and invaluable for reconnaissance. Capable of landing on almost any field, the tiny plane can turn around and get back in the air in a flash. The infantry's newest sky soldier. Uh, remember, as I've said, warbirds come in all shapes and sizes. 
This is a World War II era of Warbird, and it is soldiered on in enthusiast hands. It actually made it like a number of these that have gone into spotting or observer. This went into Civil Air Patrol after the war, and then uh, it went into private hands. Now, this particular aircraft uh, was built in December of 1944, where it was in Italy. Uh, it, after the war, it soldiered on uh, in the Army Ground Forces. It was in Europe for a while, and then it actually was retired from uh, military service and went to uh, Civil Air Patrol in 1955 or 1956, and then it went and found its way into private hands. Now, I want to talk today about our gratuitous product placement because, <clears throat> Greg, this ties into this airplane. This airplane was with the U.S. Army Air Force in December of 1944. So why would you not have this fine plaque? What is that? I think that's what I would call it, a plaque or a metal sign. You can get this, and they have all kinds of these. These are, these are really cool. These are reproductions from various uh, uh, World War II uh, images and, and posters. I mean, this is obviously a recruiting poster, but if you have, like I do, a ton of aviation knickknacks, <clears throat> this is something that you want to have in your house. And so you can put it in your library and, and enjoy it, and your, your wife or your children can make fun of you, which is what happens with me. They make fun of all my knickknacks, and Dad, you have too many aviation knickknacks, which I do, but uh, you can go out to the website and get this, and you know Jason, Jer Bear, will be happy to sell you one of these and send it off to you post haste. So uh, we're going to let Greg do a walk around, but this is the review of the Stinson L5. It is one of those um, observation airplanes that came and went rather quickly from an extinct manufacturer in the Stinson Manufacturing uh, Company. When you go out to either Facebook or catch us on YouTube, remember to smash that subscribe button, hit the like button, like us on Facebook, and Greg is going to throw up something unique, and that is the text to give scroll on the bottom. We cannot maintain and uh, fly these airplanes without your, uh, your donations, and we need those, uh, especially right now. We need them more than ever, so get out there and text to give or go to the website and donate. But I want to thank you for joining us today. My name is Fred Bell, and thank you for uh, being here for another edition of Warbird Wednesday. Have a great day.